In Memoriam is Sarah Morgan's final quest line before you can romance her. It allows you to explore a brand new planet with a lot of flora and fauna on it for a lot of survey data. And this is your warning if you don't want this to be spoiled for you. So let's get into it. Now, like most companion quest lines in this game, it's going to start off randomly after you traveled with them long enough. So for Sarah, she started talking to me randomly about the Cassiopeia incident that happened when she was still in the Navy. Now, my actual conversation with Emerald Logan unfortunately got corrupted, so I'll walk you through where you can find him and also a synopsis of what he said in the conversation. You will find him in the Mass District of New Atlantis inside the Central Command floor inside the UC Navy's power. He and Sarah Morgan will essentially fight over her time in inside the Navy, but once you have settled the conflict between those two, you'll want to make your way to Cassiopeia, as is noted in the additional steps of the quest line. Now once you actually land on Cassiopeia, you'll have a bunch of different steps to bring back energy to Sarah Morgan's crash site, and once you actually get the power cell as I'm showing you here, you're going to be attacked by a bunch of different level monsters. Level 30 was the highest level monster I encountered, so heads up. Once you go through Sarah Morgan's ship with the power back on, you will be then able to go to the next site and the next step of this quest line, which is to actually investigate the shuttle crash, aka the main reason Sarah wants to get to this planet in the first place. Since this crash site is basically her old crew members, this is where it really starts to take a more personal side for Sarah Morgan, but along the way for actually your benefit, you'll have a bunch of stuff that you can scan and actually see a bunch of different crash sites that is dragged to a very central location. Now I hate how the game sometimes destroys the actual environment depending on the settings that you have, so bear with the quality, but you'll see that as I'm going through this actual site, Sarah will be surprised that it looks like there were people that actually survived this crash from the war. Now you want to make your way to this main cabin and be prepared for an intense amount of dialogue between two people. Stop. I'll, I'll shoot if I have to. Just turn around and, and leave. I know how to use this thing, and I will. You will come to find out that this is Sona. She is a daughter that was birthed from two of the different people that Sarah actually worked with on the ship that had crashed here. Now, obviously, she's very scared. She, last time she interacted with some people, they stole all her stuff. So obviously, she's not very friendly in the beginning. But you will have to go through a couple steps because your main goal is going to be to get her off planet. Yeah, this isn't what I expected at all. Sarah will then ask you to go and retrieve all the different hollow tags or the dog tags of the people that had crashed and survived in this area after the Dauntless had crashed the ship that she was on. Now, the key part of this is that once you actually get nine of the 10 tags, you'll start to notice that you aren't able to find the final tag until you see a notification pop up behind you. This is actually a monster that Sonia described to you that actually ate her mother, which is extremely sad. Obviously, the idea is that you want to get that last one. You're going to have to fight this thing, which thankfully isn't really all that difficult, even at a level 30. Now, of course, you want to go and take the additional items from this monster and the final gene tech. Now, once you actually return to the hut, you'll notice that Sona and Sarah are in a heated debate because Sona does not want to leave this planet, which is the only home she's ever known, and Sarah is trying to convince her to go with you. This is where persuasion really comes in handy because you're going to have to convince Sona to go with you guys to really get the final reward for this whole entire story. There's a lot of different ways this conversation can go sideways for you, so I recommend doing a quick save before talking to her and you want to make sure you get her to leave because this will actually increase your affinity with Sarah making you able to romance her that much easier at the end of this quest line as well plus if you get her to leave you'll get more experience points than if you don't get her to leave with you from my experience going through this quest line now, whatever decision you decide to do with Sona, I decided to bring her with me again for the experience point. Sarah's going to want to talk to you at the Overlook, and this is where you can really start to have the flirting sections of dialogue to go through, helping you romance her that much more at the end, if that's the route that you want to take. Perhaps. I suppose we'll both have to think about that for a while now, won't we? Once you're back in New Atlantis, make your way back to Admiral Logan to give him the gene tags that you got from the fallen soldiers that died in the crash of the Dauntless, again, the ship that Sarah was on in the Navy. Depending on how this goes, you can increase your affinity with Sarah. I didn't have any options that decreased it, but it still just gives you more answers around the storyline and what happened to Sarah with this event. Found someone there, alive. 
Now, more importantly, you have to go back and check on Sona, who's now in the lodge. Thankfully, it's very easy to find her with the little tag above her. It's just a general conversation, double checking that she's okay. And again, this is dialogue that will help Sarah Morgan fall more in love with you if that's the path you want to take, or just move along through this dialogue to get to the next part, which does take a little bit of time. Because once you finish the conversation with Sona, Sarah wants to go over to the memorial where she really is just going to kind of stand and look at the fire and just kind of reminisce of everything that occurred with her on the Dauntless while you're serving in the Marines and the U.S. Navy inside of Starfield, the whole thing. And it's really just going to take a little bit of time because she walks so slow to get here. Continue the dialogue with her, flirt with her more if you want to make her a complete companion and romance her to the end, or you just skip through again, but you're going to want to make your way over to the Waterfall Bridge where you can either solidify her to be your romantic partner in the game or an actual friend in the game. You will have this dialogue option as you're seeing on the screen. And depending what you choose at this point, and how many times you've flirted with her throughout your entire endeavor of going around Starfield with her will depend on what occurs here or not. Now it is nice to know that no matter what option you pick, you will have the availability of her still being a companion, whether it's on the friendship side of things or the romantic side of things. This is just something you get to pick to how you interact with her for the rest of the game, the rest of the playthrough. But it is noted that if you choose the romantic part, there is a very immediate dialogue after this conversation that will really solidify her as your romantic partner. She will bring up her past and her family ties immediately after the conversation around actually becoming romantic partners and this will actually give you the option to solidify her as that partner or not by essentially becoming engaged it'll say commitment and this is your last chance to not have her as your complete romantic partner and if you do pick the commitment route there will actually be a wedding for you and sarah later on in the game which i'll let you guys enjoy on your own pace that is the complete story of in memoriam the entire quest line you get about 10,000 xp points you get a couple credits for doing this as well and obviously the option to make sarah morgan your romantic partner inside of starfield which brings up a lot of interesting dialogue i'll just leave it at that for you guys but i hope you guys found this walkthrough very helpful if you did enjoy it make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons and i'll catch you guys on the next video